I'd like to welcome Diane Stoltz from the Ramona Municipal Water District. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. And I'd like to also thank uh, Ram Sustainable Ramona uh, for having us here today in the church as well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. There we go. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Okay, so my name is Diane Stoltz. I'm with the Ramona Municipal Water District. I'm the uh, conservation advocate. I'm actually the cross-connection control program specialist. A lot of big title there. But uh, for the most part, today I'd like to talk to you about our water and like gray water. Um, first, I'm gonna give you some facts about, about water. You've probably heard this before, but I'm gonna remind you. The earth is made up about 90%, 97% uh, water and about I'm sorry, the earth is 90%, uh, <laughs> I will get this, 97% ocean water. That's yeah. what I want to say. And then 3% of that is fresh water. But that is locked up in, um, it's frozen, and it is also um, underground. So it's um, not really attainable. What we have when, when it rains and we collect that, that becomes our drinking water. And so water is uh, the world's universal solvent. It is the only substance that comes in forms of a solid, a gas, and a liquid. So you have um, ice cubes or ice, and then you have um, vapors, and then your liquid, obviously, is what you drink. And so the body is also 60% of water, and you need that uh, water to regulate your temperature, hydrate your skin, uh, lubricate your joints, and also maintain your blood pressure, flush your body waste, and delivers oxygen. So it's really important that we drink and we have sustainable drinking water. So we want to like capture that. If you've ever thought about your drinking water, um, in third world countries, people will walk 10, 10 miles a day to go gather buckets of water and they bring it back. They do not bathe in this water. They do not wash their hands in that water. They also will not, uh, like they don't take showers. They, they conserve their water very carefully because that's all they have. They have to walk, go get it, bring it back. So it's really important. So when you think of it like that, when you turn on the faucet and you're able to get a drink of water, this is your drinking water. So if you let it go down the drain, you're losing your drinking water. And so every time you wash your hands, this is happening. Um, so that brings me into, where does most of our water get used at the, in the house? So 80% of our water um, is used in leaks. We have leaks, and so I, um, just like I have today, I have some toilet tablets that you can put into your tank, and toilets are a huge um, area where you'll lose water. So when you put those tablets in, it'll color the bowl if you have a leak, and then that water, sometimes you won't hear it, sometimes you won't see it, but it's just running down into, uh, into the sewer system. 53% is used outdoors, so we use a lot to water our, our gardens, our uh, lawns, and wash our cars. And so these are areas where we can really save water. Like um, when it's getting ready to rain, if you have automatic sprinkler systems, you need to turn those off. Let the, let the rain do your watering for you. Um, there's other ways to save in there. 10% you use for like washing clothes and doing laundry. So that's a lot of water that's getting used up. And then another 10% is in bathing and showering. You know, we just kind of let that go. If you have an automatic turn on, turn off, then you can wash your hair or you can go ahead and you can, um, you know, soap up and then turn it on. That way you're not using as much. We can also um, save because 10% is basically in flushing our toilets. If you think about it, our toilets are, um, they're usually about, a, they use about a gallon of water. 
to uh, flush everything down. And if you think about a gallon, a uh, milk jug is a gallon of water, or like a gallon of water. Just think about how many times you're just pouring that down into the sewer. So that every time you flush that toilet, that's what's happening. Okay, so wastewater, that brings me to wastewater. Wastewater is 99.9% um, water strictly water and that 0.01% is all that debris or anything else you can picture um, an average home generates approximately 160 gallons of gray water or as we heard earlier this morning we'll call it uh, composted water um, per day water or the gray water <laughs> so gray water is defined as untreated wastewater that has not been contaminated by any toilet discharge or has not been affected by infectious contaminated or unhealthy bodily wastes and does not present a threat from contamination by unhealthy processing manufacturing or operating waste so that's the definition of uh, the composting water or gray water Gray water includes, but is not limited to, wastewater from bathtubs, showers, uh, bathroom wash basins, clothes washing machines, laundry tubs, but it does not include wastewater from kitchen sinks, dishwashers, toilets, or bidets. So that's when you do gray water systems, that's where you're gonna get your water from, is your laundry, washing your clothes, um, but not your sinks, not your kitchen sinks, so or your dishwashers. Okay. In January 2010, California adopted new gray water regulations where no permits are required to use gray water systems when it is connected to your washing machine, as long as you have a three-way valve. Um, there's going to be instances that you're washing contaminated, um, really heavily soiled, uh, items and that's where you will switch the three-way valve over to the sewer and then you'll let that go and then you can switch it back when you don't have heavily soiled items and you can use the water outside okay. so some of the questions that people have about um, composting water or gray water is uh, basically what is it it's an on-site um, wastewater system for subsurface landscaping through the use of mulch basins, um, disposable trenches, or subsurface drip irrigation fields. So when you're using the water and you have it directed to go outside, it must go underground. You don't want it to pool or collect. Uh, otherwise, then it can collect um, bacteria. So when you're doing your system, you're gonna make sure that it's going underneath the, uh, the mulch and or into the ground. It needs to percolate down into the soil so that it can be used properly. There are regulations for the use of gray water. Um, the regulations for the design, construction, and use of gray water systems can be found in uh, chapter 16A of the California Plumbing Code. So. But they're, the people that regulate the program are the County of San Diego Department of Environmental Health. And um, they do not regulate gray water systems in, in the incorporated cities of San Diego County though. So that's an important thing for you to know. And then um, these cities can implement a program of their own that meet or exceed the requirements of the CBC, the California Plumbing Code, with approval from the Regional Water Quality Control Board. So there are some regulations. Um, there's three types of gray water systems that you can use. One is called the clothes washer system. It flows from one domestic clothes washer in a one or two family dwelling. These systems are exempt. 
this is the one that's exempt and this is where you have to have the three-way valve. So as long as the modifications existing plumbing piping are made and the system is in compliance with all the CPC. So um, although a construction permit is not required for the clothes washer system, the dispersal field must be sized using the same mythology as other gray water systems. So there are some regulations that you can't just go ahead and hook up the gray water system and start watering. You have to do some um, research and make sure that you've got the right system in place. Otherwise, you could be running into some problems. Okay, then there's the simple system. A simple system exceeds the clothes washer system and has a discharge capacity of less than 250 gallons per day. So this one requires a permit and you would get the permits through the County of San Diego. Um, and then you could also probably have to have some design um, where you might have to do a drawing. Another system or the last system is the complex system. This one is greater than 250 uh, gallons a day. So this one definitely requires a permit and that you have to go ahead and do some planning. You have to draw up plans and show that where you're gonna use the water, how it's gonna be used. It has to stay on the premises. It can't run off. It needs to stay. It can't go into the sewer systems. And so there's some design requirements and then there's uh, tables and stuff that you can use to figure out how much water you're going to be using with your gray water system. So that's the kind of legal jargon of it all. But uh, also when you're determining the groundwater depth, basically this is three vertical feet of separation between the deepest gray water dispersal point and the anticipated seasonal high groundwater level. So there's some um, legal jargon and stuff that you need to know to be able to figure out that depth. But it's three feet for the um, vertical separation, just to make sure. It has to be able to percolate into the ground and be used up. You don't want to store gray water. Um, it ends up creating bacteria and growing bacteria, which can be harmful. You also have to use um, certain soaps that don't have um, any boron in it, any, they're made specifically for gray water systems so that the, it doesn't do any harm and when it percolates down and for your vegetables. Basically, gray water systems are an amazing conservation tool. They are getting um, better in designs. There's a lot of new construction that are actually building them into the houses themselves so that the residents that, um, that are there can use that to try to conserve our water. Our water is a very precious resource. And if you're looking to save like on your water bill, um, there's simple ways that you can do that with like checking for leaks, checking your sprinkler system since we use so much water outside with irrigation and um, just washing our cars. I know we like our pretty lawns, but we can also use this thing. You can take out turf. There's turf programs that'll pay you to take out your turf. There's rebate programs and put in a um, more sustainable looking, natural looking um, yard that, that'll work better for collecting water. You can use bioswells that percolates the water down into um, the aquifer and is replenished. So there's, there's many different things that we can do to try to save our precious resource. The, if one thing we can count on is drought. California is a Mediterranean climate, Southern California. We, we don't have a lot of rain here. We only get about um, 10 inches a year compared to the rest of Southern California, or the rest of California, excuse me. It's, that's not very much. And so even in drought, we're not getting the 10 inches that we normally get. And so it's just making sure that we conserve that, that drinking water um, is very important. I'm sure you've seen on the news, 
if you look at Lake Mead, um, it's really sad to see how far down it's gone. And so that's where we get water to. And so the more that we have that we can do to conserve our drinking water, the better as a society we're going to be. So I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach me at the Water District. My name is Diane, and thank you very much. Thank you, Diane. And uh, Diane got Sustainable Ramona some really interesting uh, schematics and diagrams and things from the county on uh, how they regulate how you can build a gray water system. So those are available. If anybody would like them, talk to Diane. Great. You bet. Thank you.